What's up, everybody? My name is Bryce, aka Dubs Not Subs, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over some very interesting anime news, anime and manga news. We got some stuff about the anim anime conventions going virtual. We have some Inuyasha sequel announcements, and then we also have some stuff regarding Shonen Jump. It's gonna be an interesting top, interesting time. It's gonna be a fun time, and I hope you guys are gonna be. Enjoying me enjoying me throughout this video. This could be a quicker episode. We're going through just all the news. No special segments today. In and out like a shot. It's going to be fun. Painless. Well, I don't know how people... Uh, how getting a shot is fun. Knowing you're not going to get sick is fun, I guess. I used to be scared of needles, actually, when I was younger. That stuff terrified me. Like, I hated the doctors because of it. And that was the only reason why. But anyway, let's get on to the news. Why as well hop right into it. So let's we'll start off with the first thing. Is that Funimation is to hold their anime convention in July virtually. So let's get into the article. Funimation announced on Monday that it will hold the Funimation Con 2020 virtual anime convention on July 4th, 3rd through the 4th. The company describes the event as a two-day stream of cosplay, meetups, industry panels, Q&A sessions, and more. The anime, the anime lock... Uh, lockdown virtual convention is also ran from May 1st to 3rd. The event included industry panel guests including voice stars and a variety of other anime related programming. This year's Anime Expo convention was planned for June, I mean July 2nd to the 5th in Los Angeles. The Society for the Promotion of Japanese Animation announced on April 17th that the event has been canceled due to the new coronavirus disease in yeah so, we have Funimation, one of the other ones, and there's another event that's actually going to go virtual too, and I'll get into that in a second, but Funimation, they're going to do their thing virtually. It's pretty cool. It's nice to know that even though we can't go out and see something like this in person, which would be so cool to actually go see like a panel like this or something like that in real life, I would love to actually go see it. Or like something like this, or like go actually go to an anime convention or any kind of convention because I've actually never been to one in my entire life. God, I never really had friends to do it, but now I have a ton of people that I know through that I met through this community that I could go with or like meet for the first time. That'd be so cool to go to an anime convention. But obviously, this is gonna be really cool to see. It's gonna be kind of like an E3 kind of event. In my that's how I would see it. They're just gonna be like on Twitch or something like that, doing their thing all day. You come out and watch and be a good time. I don't know if you're gonna have to pay for it or how this is exactly gonna work. I'm really interested to see how this is gonna turn out. But this is pretty cool. I'm excited that we're actually gonna be able to see this. Get to see some hopefully some new announcements for the anime, for some anime and some other interesting news that are gonna come out of that. But Let's hop on to our next thing, and that is Comic-Con is also going to do a Comic-Con at Home virtual event. This is another interesting thing that I'm not sure how it's going to work. So, let's get into the article. The organizers of San Diego Comic-Con SDCC convention announced the Comic-Con at Home event on Friday that will be held this summer. The organizers canceled this year's event through the coronavirus disease. This year's event was originally scheduled for July 21st through 26th at the San Diego Co Convention Center. Customers who purchase badges for Comic-Con 2020 will have the option to request a refund or transfer their badges to next year's event, which will take place July 22nd to the 25th of 2021. After this year's Anime Expo convention was planned for July 2nd through 5th and the delay was canceled, Funimation announced that it will hold... Okay, I just got into that. The anime... Does it not talk about anything besides that... It's announced. I'm not really sure if it's like a free event or how exactly it's going to work. And it doesn't really even have the dates. I wonder if it's on the uh, same dates right here. Uh, it would take place. That's next year's event. So I'm wondering if it's going to probably take place on these same days. Not too much inform in in information. I thought it would have a lot more. But probably it's just been announced and they're probably working through things. I play this, but there's probably copyrighted music and I don't really want to get copyrighted. So this is again, pretty cool. Hopefully they do kind of like a free thing, almost like a Twitch event where people can go like see different panels and stuff like that. Just, it'd probably be a lot of just like interviews and announcements, some quick stuff like that. I can't see too many, like, I don't know, kind of how I think they, Comic-Con has a lot of like video game kind of things like where you could like try it out and stuff like that. So I don't know how they're gonna really do that. Probably a lot of things where people could like test stuff out or see like first looks aren't gonna happen unless they do something like E3. I'm gonna compare this to E3 a lot because E3 already does this. It's always it's been like you can always watch everything virtually. So I feel like that's the best how it's gonna have to translate over, right? So unless they're gonna do a way where obviously you won't be able to play it, but you're gonna have like devs or like artists and stuff come out show their thing showcase their manga showcase their i mean their comics they're probably they do manga at comic-con too i believe but showcase whatever they're gonna do present it 
and then just go on to the next thing, kind of almost like a trailer. But I don't know too much about this and how that's really going to turn out. It's cool that we're going to still be able to check this out. I don't know if it's going to have to pay for it. Like I said, all this information is right here. And I'm sure this is just like a coming soon thing. And it's nothing too crazy here. Let me mute this real quick because I just want to make sure that this doesn't do anything. And it didn't load. So we're going to hop on to our next thing. But it also seems like my music stopped. So give me a second. Oh, no. Maybe I just... I just went blind. Sometimes the music's quieter. Is, every time you listen to it, it's always balanced at different lengths. Or not different lengths. Or it's equalized differently. But anyway, let's hop on to our next thing. So next up, we have for Weekly Shonen Jump. Or this is the unofficial account. But this is what's translated from the official statement from Jump, Shonen Jump right here. Uh, and it says, Sechua has released an official statement asking readers from, comprehen from comprehension for future breaks for that, seri that some series may receive because of the coronavirus situation. Finishing manuscripts is... Now, a hard task preventing infections is way more important for the editorial. Obviously, it makes sense. 100% makes sense how this is going to happen. They're going to still try to come out with stuff as often as they can, but it also seems like they will obviously be taking breaks. I think they already did that a couple times. There's been like one one week or like one or two weeks where we didn't get a chapter and they kind of just skipped it, let people take breaks and do it. And it, obviously it makes sense. I understand mangakas need to stay safe. I do not want any of my favorite creators to get the, to get COVID. That would really, that would be really devastating. Like someone you really care about in like one of your favorite series, is like someone getting that. So stay safe. Obviously 100% I'm okay with this. Let them take their time. I 100% respect this and I support it fully and I think most people should and I think a lot most people understand I don't think anyone's really I probably you're probably like bummed I mean obviously I'm bummed I would love to get my series every week but you gotta come from me like yeah it's not gonna happen it's just the way it is and you just gotta accept it but anyway next up we have One Piece uh Oda Sin I always call him Oda Sensei because I don't want to mess up his last name Ichiro Oda Ichiro Oda or Oda Sensei as I like to call him he came out with a kind of press about what it is for for manga or like how he's doing with the manga and all this kind of stuff so let's get into what he actually says this is a translated version so concerning coronavirus concerning the manga i'm still drawing every day as usual but since all our work is analog we cannot avoid gathering pe wait we cannot avoid gathering people so we have limited the staff to its minimum and i also have to live a life as far as from as far from contamination as i can because of that the progress of the original story and other projects have been slowed down to a frustrating extent this is why this is why I think there will be more interruptions from now on. But please understand that we are not taking a break because I'm feeling unwell. We are reorganizing work to continue making this manga while staying healthy. And for the anime, the an the anime is also interrupted for now, but preparations are underway behind the scenes so the show can continue even in the current situation. Now, in order to present part in order to support part of your time staying home, the first 61 volumes of One Piece available for free in Shonen Jump's app and only in Japan, a manga will uh, a manga will not help you through the basic necessities of life, but I'll be happy to help you. So, if you're in Japan or you like to read the uh, Japanese versions of the manga, go for it. Also, Manga Plus is releasing a bunch of chapters for free, and I think One Piece was a part of that in the English version. You can go on and check the free app. It has all that stuff on there. I think that and uh, My Hero Academia also had a ton of chapters for free, so if you're behind you want to been, or you want to read it, definitely catch up. Now's the time, especially when they're releasing it for free. But, obviously, again, understand. I 100% am okay with this. He... Take a break, stay safe. That's all we. That's all I want for this man. Don't want. Definitely don't want this guy to get sick. And again, he's still trying his best. This guy has been doing it for almost a thousand. I think we're almost a thousand over a thousand chapters right now. Or if we're not, we're very very close. And he's been doing it for so so long, and he's been consistent. Even in this, he's still trying to stay as consistent as possible. I have to give this man props. He never. He rarely takes break. I don't know how many times. I don't know how many times he's taken a break, but it can't be a lot. He's just consistently putting out quality content, even if you don't think it's as good as East Blue or like the earlier stuff in the in the One Piece series. I don't really know. I haven't read. I'm not caught up right now, but I do know that a lot of people say that the older stuff is better. But that's kind of like the hipster complex. It's like the old stuff was way better than the new stuff. So anyway, he's still putting out great quality, and that's so cool that he, I mean, he's still trying to do the best he can, and it's obviously understandable what's going on. 
I so again, so poor Oda, nothing, wish nothing for the best for him and all the other Shonen Jump manga, because I'm glad that we're still going to get manga in any way, even if it's going to be a little slower, it's nice to know, there's still a little bit of normalcy in your life, you know, coming on, on Sunday, going to check your app and be like, yes, it's out, I get to read all the chapters, it's so exciting, it's nice to know that's still there, even if it's not there every week, it's nice to know that you still have a little bit of that routine that's been changed so much, but anyway, next up, we're going to get onto some good news, some good news. Depending on whether you like Demon Slayer or not, it now has over 60 million copies in circulation. And I'm going to see real quick. Let's see. Uh, we'll have more than 6, copy, 6 million copies in circulation on May 13. That includes digital copies and about 2.8 co million copies of the upcoming 20th volume, which will ship on May 13th after a delay due to the effects of the, new co of the COVID-19. So the franchise has gone over 60 million copies. And I'm pretty sure... Okay, second only to One Piece. I was going to say, One Piece still has outsold it. But that's crazy. It's catching up. It's getting to the point where it might I, honestly outsell One Piece at a certain point, which is crazy. I don't think, but I think it's ending soon, so I don't think it will ever, like, I don't think it's going to end up actually outselling One Piece. But that, it's so crazy that it's second. It's be out, it's out beating My Hero Academia, Chainsaw Man, which is huge right now. Uh, what's other ones? Haiku, which is reaching its final. So that's sales are going to be doing really great right now. Promise Neverland. I don't think Dr. Dr. Stone's sales didn't do well, so not them. But anyway, all the other, like, huge ones, it's outselling all because of this anime. It's exactly like Attack on Titan, only Attack on Titan's changed the entire industry. This just changed, like, the series and, like, what's popular right now. But it's insane. It's, like, just proves the point of how fantastic, like, and how great and influential an anime is for a manga. Because, like, let's be honest, how many people knew about Attack on Titan before the anime? Think of, like, what that anime did for the entire industry, how much more manga was able to come from that. But without, obviously, without the manga, you couldn't have the anime. But... This is so cool. I'm I'm 100% happy with Demon Slayer getting this getting this kind of praise and this sales. I do think the story's amazing. I love the story. And that's what keeps me reading all the time. I don't think the art is the best, and I don't think it's the best art that Shonen Jump has to offer. But I do think it does its job. I think it serves its purpose. I think it's good, and I think it has some good moments in it. Obviously, the anime is way better in animation compared to the manga. In my opinion, I think the like Ufo Table did a crazy, crazy, amazing job. Blew it out of the water. There's a reason. People talked about how great the animation was, and whether you guys say, obviously there was a lot of hype that went into like that voting and stuff. There was a reason it was nominated. I do think, honestly, Distributive won. No, not really. I don't really know. There's so many other like series that have fantastic animation, but should it have been nominated. I 100% 100% think. I've been saying that a lot. That's like my catchphrase for this podcast is 100%. But I totally agree that it should be on that list as a nomination it's so good the art style is so unique it's so smooth everything about that anime was absolutely amazing and it deserves this kind of sales i think it's so cool to see demon slayer getting this kind of praise from a series that was gonna get canceled to a series that's now like the t number one of out of everything it's just blowing up it's insane how trends work it's so crazy to know let something go from nothing to something just like like that it's so it's like and it's getting i think it deserves it too i think it's a fantastic story it's really engaging and it gets better even after the anime neon says it i i and i 100 percent agree with him that it gets way better after this wait till the movie comes out that train that uh the i forgot what the movie was called but that arc is so cool when you get to meet the flame house sherry it's over, man. That, that was so... It was epic. It was so great. It can't... Oh, man. I love that arc. But anyway, next up, we have some more fun stuff with Demon Slayer, and that is they're going to be coming out with Tamagotchi versions of Demon Slayer. So fans will get the chance to raise the Ultimate Demon Slayer Corpse member with the upcoming Tamagotchi toy release. The, store, the toy will feature nine different characters to feed and care for, including favorites like Tanjiro, Nezuko, Inosuke, and Zenitsu. The toy will has three additional mini games to train your personal Demon Slayer. If characters neglect their training regimen and they become injured in the next Demon Battle, they could become injured in the next Demon Battle. The Kagashi Kusurasu, I'm not going to be, be able to see that say that in any way, will also make appearances during the playthrough. This is so cool. I'm 100% I'm getting these. If you like, look at this. Look at that. You get a Tamagotchi Demon Slayer. I'm 100% raising Zenitsu, by the way. He's my favorite character in the show. I love that guy. And it's also coming out for 2,530 yen or 
not that, I mean, it's it's not like crazy expensive, but it's so cool. I'm 100% getting it. You're going to get seven characters with you. You can raise your own Demon Slayer. It's so cool. I, oh, man, this is so cool. I'm so hyped for this. Like, right when I heard this coming out, I'm like, I don't even really care about, ta like, Tamagotchis. But this is absolutely amazing. I love that. And, like, you get the, oh, I can't wait for this to come out. This is going to be so cool. This is going to be uh, different, sh three different shell colors also right here. Three different shell colors. This is so cool. I'm like 100% hyped for this. This is so cool. God, I said one. I, man, every time I like hit on one word and then I start using a lot and then it starts to annoy me because then I come aware of it and it just drives me crazy. But anyway, next up we have the, that is Snafu. My team on Ramp the Comedy is wrong as I expected. Was slated for an April 9th premiere and got delayed and will now be coming out in the summer. And this is the final season. This is going to be the last season for Snafu. And right here, does it say, I believe it just says summer 2020. Does it actually have the release date? Let me see. Season three is rescheduled for July. Okay, so for July. Uh, does it have the actual date on here? Because basically, it's just the final season. Okay, it's going to have a dub. But I've been reading. I've been watching the sub, so I'll finish it with this sub. Is it have it anywhere on here that... Is it just say July? The season was scheduled to premiere late at night. Uh, before the delay, instead of a new season, the second season began re airing at the that time. This anime would also have started to stream on Amazon Prime Video in April 9th. It was shelled. I believe it's April 10th. Does it really not have it? Or is it like, did I miss it? Did I like reread it? I, okay, it's, okay, no, it just says rescheduled in July. It doesn't have a date yet. Besides, it's going to be coming out in the month of July. Cannot wait for this. I love this series. I love my. I love rom-coms. This is like it play. It's a harem, but it plays in on the harem aspect, and it does feel really unique. And I really like the characters for this. The main character is like really cool, and obviously these three characters. Right here, I don't remember the names. It's been so long since I've seen this series, but I can't wait to see how it comes to a conclusion. It's so cool. It's absolutely amazing. I'm so excited to see how this is gonna end. Because I just want to know who he's going to end up with. If he's going to end up with anybody. Uh, hopefully it doesn't end up like that one series. What was that one se series that came out like a couple years ago? Or like last year. And it's basically like everyone was like super messed up. And like some someone like someone sends this guy, this kid a love letter. And he it doesn't have the address so he has to figure out who it is. But when you find out each person, they each have like, this like weird kink they actually want them to do. And it's not because they, they love him but in a weird, like kind of like a weird way. Like one girl wants to make him his pet and all this kind of like crazy shit. And then, ah, oh, the ending is so weird to that series. Man, it's it's kind of funny. It was a wacky series, like, the whole time. I can't re If I remember it, I hope, and I'm not going to remember it, but, man, was that series insane. If any of you guys know what I'm talking about, please leave it in the comments so I can remember. But, anyway, for our second to last topic, we have that the time, that time I got reincarnated as a slime novels enters the final arc in the 18th volume. This isn't the final volume, but we are getting on to the ending of that time I got reincarnated as a slime, which is sad to see it go. Obviously, I love the anime. I cannot wait for season two. I hope the entire thing gets animated. I'll be so bummed if it doesn't, because it's such a good anime, and I cannot... Uh, that's how I first watched it, and that's how I want to experience the entire thing. It's so, so fantastic. Fuse is a fantastic writer, man. It's so... I can, I'm sad to see it go, but I'm happy to know that it's not. They're not going to drag it on for crazy long. But I mean, 18 volumes—that's insane. For like, it's not like 18 manga volumes. This is 18 novel volumes. That's gonna. It's still. That's still like insanely long. I love this series. I can't wait to see it end up getting hopefully all completely animated. I think it's fan, absolutely fantastic series. Check it out if you haven't. It's one of the best isekais out there. That and right when Rise of the Shield came out, I was hooked on both of those. I really like those. Those came kind of at the same time, but Slime really is like it's very wholesome. It's absolutely amazing, and you have to check it out if you haven't. But anyway, for our last story, this is the big one. This is what people are freaking out on. This is that the Inuyasha sequel has been announced. I'm going to read this so I don't misinform because apparently there's been like some misinformation about it going out. So I'm just going to read this so I don't tell you guys the wrong thing. But anyway... From San Francisco, San Francisco, California, a new feudal fairy tale begins. Inuyasha production team Sunrise reunite to recreate the animation series Yashihime and Princess Half Demon. With, with, will Eisner Hall of Famer Rumiko Takahashi also joins the team as a main character design. Today, Viz Media confirms that the rights to the digital streaming uh, Eastern are established? I don't know. Uh, and home video of Yashihime, Princess Half Demon for North America, North and Latin America territories. In Yashihime, Princess Half Demon, the daughter of 
Seso Homaru and Inuyasha set out on a journey transcending time set in feudal Japan. Half demon twins Toa and Set. Setsuna are separated from each other during a forest fire. While desperately searching for her younger sister, Toa wanders into a mysterious tunnel that sends her into the present day Japan, where she is found and raised by Ka Kagome Higurashi's brother, Sota, and his family. Ten that's so okay, that's gonna be cool. Uh, uh, this is like, this is, so it's a sequel to Inuyasha. I've never actually finished Inuyasha, I've been reading it, and obviously that's a huge spoiler right there, so I just got, I, I already knew that was kind of gonna happen. I mean, it was pretty obvious from the beginning how it was kind of working, how it was going to kind of work out. So I already knew that was going to happen. So I mean, but I am interested to see how this is going to work out. Obviously, I'm going to finish Indie Watcher first. I believe the entire thing is on Hulu. Let me check right now since I have Hulu pulled up. Uh, Indie Yasha. But I know, th and if not, you know, there's other ways of getting it done. Uh, let me see. It is. Okay. Yes. Is the, all these seasons are on here. All seven seasons are on there if there are only seven seasons. But. That's cool. I'm, I'm gonna 100%. I said it again. <laughs> I'm gonna finish Inuyasha. I love the series. I thought I was really enjoying it. I actually, someone from my work, it was weird. Someone from my work who did, had nothing, looked nothing like uh, someone who would watch anime, and he really did it. But when I talked, when I brought up anime, I like he asked me what I was doing. And I think I said something about anime or like manga or something like that. And then he brought up Inuyasha, and then we both like, I was like, yo, that's so crazy. So then we started talking about. And you watch it, and I started watching it on Netflix, and we just kind of bonded. It was so, it was so crazy. Like we were so, we were so. Um, it was weird to know that he was into manga, not that it was like, or like into anime. It was just because he did, he he was not an anime watcher, but for any watcher. He was all for it, and it was so cool because we talked about it all the time. We talked about Espos, where it was going to lead, what was going to happen next. We all, it was so cool. I 100%, that was one of the coolest moments I had at Chrysler, and I, I loved it so much. It was so much fun to actually like talk to somebody about like anime or whatever and just bond over that when I previously had no idea that he even enjoyed that. And but So, I mean, 100 I, I'm excited for this. I am excited for this. I hope, I'm glad to see Inuyasha is getting a sequel. Obviously, it was really popular. Gonna have to finish the Inuyasha anime first before I watch this. I don't know when it's exactly gonna come out. I don't think it has a release date. I think it's just been announced. So, it's gonna be cool. I'm excited for it. I'm gonna finish Inuyasha. I also wanna finish it, uh, read Masan Iki. I believe that's what it's called. It's basically the rom-com that they were doing that... Rumiko Takahashi has it's basically like here I'll, I'll look it up on right stuff but it's basically like a rom-com about this dude who moves into like a hotel or something like that or not an, a hotel an apartment and like he kind of has a thing for the landlady I'm not sure exactly my sin hopefully no okay I spelled it wrong I, I know it's on like recently for the for like new manga that's out where are you? Right here. Oh, Masan Ikoku. It's basically. I want to know. Oh, here's the episode. Let me let me read the description. Um, Yusake Goda didn't accept, didn't get accepted into college on the first try, so he's studying to retake the entrance exams. But living in a dilapidated building full of eccentric and noisy tenants is making it hard for him to achieve his goals. Now that a beautiful woman has moved in. To become uh, moved in to become the new resident manager, Godi is driven to distraction. Comedy romance. Okay, so it's kind of like this wacky thing with tenants and stuff, and he kind of has a crush on the new landlady that comes in. This is cool. I'm like I'm excited for this. I love like I say I love my slice of life. I love my my romance. So I'm really uh, this one's gonna be cool. This is the Rumiko Takahashi thing that I really wanted to actually read, but. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate it. You guys know that. Leave a comment down below if you enjoyed. Tell me what you enjoyed about it and tell me what you want to see next. Leave a like if you think I deserve it and sub if you really thought I deserved it. But I always appreciate you watching. I, you know, cheers for the cold ones. Pour one out for the cold one. Pour one out for the boys and girls. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in another video.